Hey everyone, I'm Pratima and this here is the MSI Prestige 15. Looking at it from the outside, there is nothing particularly striking about it. It looks like your usual ultra book, but inside it packs some pretty interesting stuff. This one here has the latest Intel 6 core i7 10 gen processor paired with GTX 1650 Max Q graphics. And since this combination is pretty rare in a laptop intended for content creators, I was very excited to test this guy out. So let's get straight into it. As you can see here, the design is top notch. It has an aluminium body where in the lid has the classic MSI Dragon. It is also thin, light and easy to carry around. The lid has some flex in it, but then again, you have to compromise a little with a laptop so thin. By the way, it only measures at 15.9 mm thickness and has a weight of mere 1.6 kilos. It is not as feather light as the Asus Swift, but portable enough to carry around. Port selection too is very good for an ultrabook. On the left, you get two Type-C USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, both of which support Thunderbolt 3.0, an HDMI port and an audio port. On the right, you are greeted with two Type-A USB 3.2 Gen 2 and surprisingly a micro SD card slot too. But since this laptop is intended for content creators, MSI should have gone for a micro SD card slot instead. Charging here is done via the USB-C ports for which you get a 90W adapter. Now, about the display, this one here has a 15.6 inches FHD IPS matte screen. There's a 4K variant of it too that claims to have 100% RGB, but this one here is a slightly toned down version. Having said that, it is fairly color accurate with 95% sRGB, 73% of Adobe RGB and 63% of NTSC color gamut coverage. For me, it did a good job on my Photoshop and video editing needs. However, I am not keeping aside the fact that the 4K version will give you marginally better color coverage. Also, I found the display to be fairly bright. However, it is not that bright to be used outdoors. MSI has included tons of color profiles which you can change from the MSI Creator Center or the MSI True Color app. The screen also bends to 180 degrees which is something I've always wanted in my XPS 15. And what's cool about this is the fact that you can rotate the display to show content to people sitting right opposite to you. On the aesthetic side, you get very thin bezels on the screen which kind of makes the laptop look bigger than it is. On the top center of it, you get a 720p webcam whose quality is strictly average. Hi guys, this is uh, Pratima and although the 720p webcam and the audio from this device are quite subpar, our videos are good, right? So do subscribe and hit that bell icon. Anyways, let's get on with the review now. The 2 word speaker is also quite average, so it is not very good for listening to music and stuff. Below the screen, you get the MSI keyboard. It's not the Steel Series one like we're used to seeing on MSI's gaming units. The keyboard is very comfortable nonetheless and is very easy to get used to. I come from the XPS 15 keyboard, which is one of the best I have seen so far, but I like this one too. This keyboard does have backlighting, but only glows in one shade of white. There are three levels of backlight, which you can adjust using the F8 button. Right below the keyboard, you have the trackpad, which I felt is not the best thing about the Prestige 15. On my use, it has been prone to frequent accidental touches while typing, which went on to being frustrating at times. And it is not the most accurate ones out there too. On the top left of it, there's a fingerprint sensor that gives the laptop a very nice touch. So overall, I felt like the design of it is quite solid and sturdy. Alright, let's get on to the performance. And this one here is fired up with the latest Intel Core i7-10710U Comet Lake processor. It is a 6-core, 12-thread, 10-gen CPU with 15W TDP, although it is configurable up to 25W as well. So as compared to the 45W Intel 9-gen i7-9750H, this one here is more energy efficient. You also get 16GB of RAM in dual channel and a relatively fast 512GB NVMe SSD. There's also another vacant M.2 slot in case you need more storage. Normal tasks yielded absolutely no problems whatsoever, as one might expect from a laptop of this caliber. The multitasking capabilities were also quite impressive. I had over 15 Google tabs open at once, did some photo editing at the same time, and still the laptop showed no sign of fatigue. 
Then I moved on to heavy tasks like video editing. The Galaxy A70s video that we published recently on our channel was edited in this machine and the editing part was quite fluid. There were some hiccups while using the Adobe After Effects, but the Premiere Pro had no issue. The rendering time wasn't bad at all. It took around 20 minutes to render. In comparison, our main editing PC with the Intel Core i7 9700K processor and RTX 2070 was slightly faster by 17 minutes. So yes, this one is capable of light to moderate editing. And also, if you are a graphics designer or a front-end developer, the 10th gen U processor will not create any performance issue. Now, even though this is not a gaming rig, this one has a fairly powerful GTX 1650 Max-Q graphics. However, when I played games on it, for the optimal performance, I used the high performance mode, which you can turn on on MSI's Creator Center. Here, you can choose between high performance, balanced, silent, and super battery. You can also create a shortcut key as when to activate these modes based on the task you are doing. Games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Far Cry 5, and Apex Legends were playable at around 50 FPS at max settings, which is not bad at all. I also played Battlefield in medium settings and got around 60 FPS with no stutters or lag. Mid-tier games like FIFA 20, CSGO, and Dota 2 work flawlessly at max settings and FPS over 120. Talking about the thermals, it does run quite hot, especially when playing games. It's hot, especially on the top, near the hinge area where the air exhaust lies. The CPU temperature is usually over 90 degrees with around 30 minutes of gaming or so, but the GPU is a little bit cooler. However, you can uh, tune the fans to turn it on to max, which by the way gets very loud, but again, it will also solve the throttling and heating issue. So yeah, the Prestige 15 isn't any gamer's fantasy laptop. It's for someone who works all day and takes a break to enjoy some gameplay. Battery life on the MSI Prestige 15 is quite impressive and that is the perk of having a low-powered CPU. You can get around 9 to 10 hours of battery life on this FHD version while using it for browsing and watching YouTube videos. For more intensive activities like Photoshop, you will get around 4 to 5 hours of battery, which I think is great. So here is my verdict on the MSI Prestige 15. I think it is a great ultrabook especially for a market like Nepal where the Dell XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro 13 will cost you a fortune. The MSI Prestige 15 is priced at 1.8 lakhs Nepali rupees whereas the Dell XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro 13 will cost you well over 2.5 lakhs. Although the XPS 15 offers you a faster CPU and a better build, the MSI Prestige 15 holds its own ground with a fairly good display, excellent battery life, and an overall good enough performance. So if you want to save some money and get a Dell XPS 15 alternative, I would recommend this to the content creators. Also, if you are a civil engineer or a mechanical engineer who use AutoCAD and SolidWorks kind of software and are traveling a lot on site, this is a very good option. So that is our review of the MSI Prestige 15 SC. Do let us know in the comments below what you think about this laptop. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you for watching.